Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. My guest today is a writer who's tackled everything from beauty pageants to baby rearing, from politics to a precocious childhood in the 1960s. Joyce Maynard is in the studio to tell us more about her latest book, The Usual Rules, as it's released in a French translation. Joyce Maynard, thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Enchanté. <laughs> <laughs> Your recent novel, The Usual Rules, or Les Règles d'Usage, as it's being published yes. here in France, starts on that fateful day, September 11th, 2001, in New York. Looking back 15 years later, how did you want to cover the event as an artist and a writer? I didn't really want to cover the event, Olivia. I was more interested in the aftermath of the event. I don't know any way to tell the story of 3,000 people who die. So I chose the story of one person who lived, who survived. Um, I was in New York that day, and I was myself overcome by the, the tragedy. And I knew that I needed to, as I always do, take that, those feelings and tell a story. But I told the story of one girl whose mother dies, who has to figure out how to survive after the death of her mother. And indeed, that girl, Wendy, she's involved in this very important parental relationship, mother-child relationship within the book. It's very much told from the child's point of view. Was it that is. a tricky new angle for you as a um, parent? It was an interesting, I love to find a challenge. Um, she's the daughter of, of divorced parents. I was myself divorced, raised my children on my own. And after her mother dies, she has no choice but to leave her home and go to live with a father she barely knows. So I wanted to imagine the kinds of struggles that I have that I had with my daughter when she was 13. It's really a story of a mother and a daughter more than terrorism, but from my daughter's point of view. Okay, and there's an important um, detail in the book that I really enjoyed. It's Anne Frank's diary. Wendy is a reader of Anne Frank's diary. And you wrote in a journal as, as a young I lady. Did. Do I you did. still write in a journal now? I, I do not. My, in a way, my writing is my journal. Um, but I've written all my life. I've published many books um, in, my, in my life. After that event, I wanted to find an optimistic story. I am not a fairy tale. Obviously, this is a tragedy. This girl has suffered a huge loss. But I wanted to create a character who would survive and to explore how she might do that. I really wanted to write a story that could be read by by mothers and daughters. It's, it's a book for adults, but it's also a book for a 13-year-old girl who's struggling with her mother, maybe, as 13-year-old girls should do. But usually, the mother lives through that struggle and as was true for my daughter and me, we come out the other end of it. Yeah, in a very positive way. Now, your book is just one of hundreds being published here in France at a time of year that we call La Rentrée Littéraire. Run for Your Lives, It's the Revolution is another one of those new releases featuring Jean-Luc Godard and the French revolutionary Danton as fictional characters. It's Thierry Froger's first novel and he told France 24 all about it. Under the watchful eye of revolutionary Danton, emerging author Thierry Froger. In his first novel, he's brought together an unusual combination of fictionalized characters. Danton, a leading figure in the early stages of the French Revolution, and new wave filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard. I imagine that Danton wasn't guillotined, that he managed to keep his head on his shoulders and was exiled in 1794 to an island in the Loire River. For the second part of the narrative, I wondered what it would be like if Godard had made a film for the bicentenary of the French Revolution of 1789. Using speeches, notes and invented letters, Thierry Froger puts himself in the very different shoes of Danton and Godard. In a nod to the filmmaker's artistic philosophy, the book looks at the meandering creative process. The book works like a huge collage that shows a series of stories together from different eras, different characters, but with echoes from one story to another. Godard said we should promote the equality and fraternity between reality and fiction. So this collage helps me to pass smoothly from reality to fiction throughout the book. After five years of writing, many publishers turned away Froger's novel before he finally got to see it on shop shelves. When I learned that the novel was coming out for the rentrée littéraire, I thought, 
It's both good news and bad news. It's true that it's a good way to get noticed, but it's also a battlefield. I'm under no illusions. I know it's a difficult game to win. Roger also teaches art at the University of Nantes. He made the most of his time in Paris to head to the Palais de Tokyo and take in Michel Welbeck's exhibition. Mixing literature and photography, Welbeck's another writer who glides between fact and fiction. Among the many characters in the novel, I talk about Michel Houellebecq. I imagine the revolutionary Robespierre, very old in a wheelchair. And I say that he looks like Houellebecq in 2016. So that's a wink to him. Thierry Froges is a complex and original first novel, taking its place at this year's Rentrée Littéraire. Joyce, you published your first book when you were very young, just 19, yes. I believe. And around that time, just earlier, the author J.D. Salinger had noticed your work and written to you in, in praise of it because he was struck by an article you wrote at just 18 years old. What do you think he identified with in your writing? You know, um, the story...